It's time to look at the Jag, even if it doesn't kind of really look like a Jag. Let's get started. So this is a 2014 Jaguar XJL supercharged. It has the five liter supercharged engine in it with tons of power. It's in pretty good shape, but you have heard me and Mrs. Wizard talk about how a lot of cars all look the same anymore. This isn't a fault of Jaguar. It doesn't make this a bad car, but that most all cars anymore are changing to this front end. You guys have seen the green 1995 Jaguar XJ12 that we have which is in very good condition, and it is iconic Jaguar. It looks just like a Jaguar. When you see it in the rearview mirror, you see the headlights, you say, that's a Jag. But when you see this in the rearview mirror, you say, is that a Honda Accord? I don't, what is that? And again, I'm not knocking the guy's car. I'm just saying styling has drastically changed. This one's in for some suspension problems, and that's it. He took it to the dealer and got some quotes for the issues we're going to talk about and the prices were literally through the roof. And the customer said, park my car outside, I'm not even going there bro, I'm taking it to Omega. In the world of mechanic shops, you should find a happy medium. That's kind of where we're at at Omega. We're not the cheap guy. We're not the guy at the bottom of the barrel where you get the biggest price cut. That, that's not what we do here. But we're not dealership expensive either. We're kind of in the middle, and that's really where you would like to be. Good quality, good honesty with a fair price, not dealership level prices. Again, the cheapest guy is usually not the answer. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing, and then we'll dive into what is wrong with it. We no longer have the Leaper, which is the Jaguar that's literally leaping off the front of the hood. Here we have what's called the Growler. It's just a Jaguar face that's growling. That does denote that it's a Jaguar, but let Mrs. Wizard zoom out and pretend for a moment you saw that in your rearview mirror. Is that a, a new Lincoln Continental? Is it a Honda? Is it a... You, just, you could go on for quite a list of, of different cars at what it looks like. And I think that's a bad move on Jaguar's part. I really wish they would have kept with some of the classic styling. You can see we have the front wheels off and we have some suspension components out. We'll show you that here in a bit. It has nice big brakes, which is really good for stopping power. So you guys always wonder when I'm looking at the brakes, it's like, how is it that you can just take a quick glance and you can look at the brake pad thickness? It's because I'm looking right here. You can see the pad right there and there you go. It's 80% thickness. I know from years of experience, I can look at that. That's fairly thick pads. We saw one mystery today. Let's keep going around. You can see that the paint is decent on this car. It's not caved in or dented or anything. It has been maybe possibly in a rainstorm or something. You can see some water spots from rain. I do like the tail lights on these. That does look like a Jaguar. It doesn't look like anything else. They did do that very well. And again, down this side, nothing serious going on. Let's go ahead and hop under the hood. This is our five liter supercharged engine. And I'm not sure the exact horsepower figures. You guys could Google it and check it out. And the reason why I'm not too going too far into it because we're not doing any engine work to this vehicle. We're not diving in or tearing it apart or anything. Let's go ahead and pull this little guy off. And just like the older XJRs, you can see it has a liquid cooled intercooler and it is supercharged. I'm actually kind of glad nothing's wrong with the engine because, and this isn't a Jaguar problem, this is any newer car. There's tons of plastic, plastic, plastic. You go to take this stuff apart and it's brittle, it can break, you have to be so careful and it can cause a lot of stress taking stuff apart. So luckily, we don't have to do anything up top on the engine. It's also very tight all the way around the engine. You can see right here, there's the valve cover where I'm pointing down. You literally can't fit your hand. You can't do anything. So the front of the engine doesn't look too bad to get to. You can see the serpentine belt down there. But it would be difficult to do much else. The front end of this car, it doesn't harken back to the classic Jaguar styling. For some people, they may love the styling. 
But where this car really shines, and it is definitely Jaguar-esque, is the interior. Let's let Mrs. Wizard show you guys inside of there. There we are, ladies and gents. 94,101 miles, and apparently the battery getting a little low on here. So, well, luckily it's gonna turn off in a second because, well, we just closed the door. But it does have a nice leaping leopard on there. We do get that back. And a whole lot of gauges that won't show up until we actually get the car started. But let's go ahead and take a peek on that dash. As we move up, it is a beautiful leather wrapped dash. And I'm quite impressed with this interior. The outside, I am kind of sad that it doesn't look like that vintage classic Jag we're so used to seeing from the oh, 70s and 80s and even early 90s. But no, this does keep that quality. It has a beautiful analog clock there, lovely round vents as well that make sure we get air where it needs to go. A very large infotainment system as well, and some nice, simple to use buttons for our HVAC system. It does have a pop up gear selector when the car is started, which is definitely a more modern design than what we're used to on a Jaguar. Ooh, looky, hidey hole. This is interesting. It has a separate, you can close one or just have one open for your cup holders. And then again, they hide behind that piano. Black, nice styling. Another little hidey hole here. There we go. Can hold some change, hide something small in there, or it could be just a nice resting spot for your cell phone. And yet another one on our leather wrapped armrest. And you'll see just some simple controls there. Got our phone chargers, aux cords, power outlets, whatnot. Of course, the universal you know, tire gauge that we all keep in our cars. No, we don't. We have monitoring systems in our cars anymore for that, but a good thing they do. If we look at the door card, you'll see that it has more wood trim and a nice leather wrapped lower section with some nice chrome trim in between. The seats are that same camel, dark camel color with the leaping leopard imprinted into the headrest and perforated leather in the center with some nice kind of a black, very dark charcoal piping as well. As we move to the back seat, it is room for three people back there. So this car can hold five and it actually has very nice leg room. If we can get the camera to go down, nice leg room back there. It's in really, really clean, nice condition as well. So this will be a nice ride as well. Our ceiling is a very dark charcoal as well. And it looks like we have two different moon roofs as well. One in the back and one in the front that is of Alcantara. So it looks nice, not sagging in really good condition. As we get to our steering wheel, which means, yes, we're about done. You'll see that it does have wood on the outside, leather on the inside, and our lovely Leaping Leopard in the center. So even though we don't have it on the hood any longer, that little Leaping Leopard is all over the place in here. So we are, they are keeping their nostalgia roots alive. Lots of little buttons control various things, such as cruise, our telephone, controls on that front. I would assume the big screen in the front where our gauges would be and other settings as well. So this thing is in really, really good condition. I'm wondering what's going on with that suspension. Let's get this up in the air. So lots of panels here. You can see it's got nice, I don't know what you call those stripes, girdling, whatever you call that on the panel. We're not seeing any coolant or anything coming out of all these little holes. Everything's nice and dry. Everything looks good there as well. We're just doing a cursory glance over the customer. Just wanted a quick inspection. They don't want all bunch of stuff torn apart on it. They have a list of things they want it done and nothing more. You can see that we have the struts off. Here's our little ride height sensor. Let's check the brakes. Nice and thick just like we saw a minute ago. Nothing loose there. Sway bar link is good. Brakes, obviously I just checked that. Those are nice and thick. Here's our little ride height sensor. Nothing loose there. The sway bar link is disconnected, so I'm not gonna wiggle or do anything with that. Here's our steering rack boot, nice and dry. And you can kind of see into the engine area a little bit, but you can see how tight it is in there. Very, very tight on this car. 
Let's check the other boot. It's dry as well. And you can kind of see into the engine area there as well. Everything looks pretty dry. Here's some more belly pan going on. The transmission's right above that. We can see through here. No leaks going on inside of there. So here's our transmission pan. And I mentioned to you guys, lots of things anymore are going to plastic. And that's definitely the case here. Like, totally plastic on the transmission oil pan. Transmission mount is good. There's our CV joint at the front of the drive shaft there. Exhaust is good. Nothing loose going on there. Another CV joint back here. And there's our big differential. This has some sort of electronic motor on the side of it. It must be a, possibly a locking differential, something like that going on. You can see there, it's an actuator. Here's a wheel installed and brakes are about 60% there. They look good. We have air strut in the back. It's in good shape. There's a ride height sensor. We do have a new sway bar link right there and also a sway bar bushing. You can't see it. It's up above in the uh, subframe area. This boot is good. That boot is good. Again, a new link. There's a new bushing up top. Brakes are good. Nothing loose. Here's our dual exhaust out the back. Let's go ahead and check our tire date code. So here's our date code, 25th week of 2021. So these are still good tires. They still got a lot of life left on them. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So here we have the front struts are off, just like you saw a minute ago. You can see they've been trying to grease the center portion of this strut mount. It's been making some horrible squeaking noises. They had it to the dealer to get some parts replaced on this, and apparently the prices were just insane. You can also see that the spring insulator, kind of a cushion there, is just crumbling. But the strut's fine. It's not leaking anywhere, and it's expensive. If it's still working, why throw it away? You can see in the center here, there's two pins, electrical pins down in that hole. This is an electronic strut. So we have this one apart already in my handy dandy spring compressor. I've seen some of you guys on Facebook memes and things posted where you're using weird contraptions to try to get the springs compressed on your Honda Civic and they're like letting loose and breaking people's ankles and doing crazy things. We don't do that here. We have a machine that you turn the crank and it compresses the spring for you. And we do have this mount removed. You can see that the spring insulator is deteriorating. It's just turning into like sand. And I don't know why Jaguar, even in 2014, is still using this crumbly, cheap crap. I know, Car Wizard, because our XJ12 had that same problem. Yeah, a lot of the mounts and things are collapsed. Same cheap foam that just disintegrates with age. It literally turns into like a pink sand. And you can see here, this center mount is shot. So many times I mentioned to you guys it's cost effective just to replace the whole strut and on a Toyota Camry, a Ford Fusion, it makes sense. But on a Jaguar where the electronic struts are many, many hundreds of dollars, very expensive, you don't just throw it away because this cushioning went bad. You replace just the strut mount and also the spring insulator and you put it back together. These, these struts are still good. We're going to still use them. I have a little bit more to show you guys over here on my toolbox. So this thing has 94,000 miles on it. It makes sense that some of these components are starting to fail. Any European car, Mercedes, BMW, Jaguar, Range Rover, any of these cars, Porsche, when they get to the 100,000 mile mark, you can go ahead and get your checkbook out. It's going to start you're going to start writing checks left and right. That's just the way it is. So here's the sway bar links. You guys saw we had those replaced in the back. These are the old ones and they're torn. The boots are torn. There's quite a bit of play in these. Water intrusion has happened here and has tore up the joint because the boot is torn. These are our sway bar bushings and there's just enough play. It's ovaled out just enough that whenever you go over bumps, the sway bar would clunk, 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 clunk. It makes a horrible noise. So these are shot. 
that's pretty much all we're doing to this vehicle. We asked the customer if you want any further work done, do you need anything else inspected? They said, no, I just want those items addressed and then I don't want to go any further. So we're taking care of those issues and we're waiting on some parts actually right now. We're almost done with the job and we can put it back together and get it back to the customer. So again, not knocking the styling of this vehicle. I just, we're, me and Mrs. Wizard are not 19 years old. We remember Jaguars for what they were, what they've been since the 1960s. And when we see change like this, we're old fuddy-duddies and we're like, we don't want that to change, we don't want... But the reality is, the younger generations probably love this styling and this will be the Jaguar from here on out. There's nothing inherently wrong with this vehicle, it's actually very beautiful. And it has a wonderful, wonderful interior. I do love the interior, it is so nice on this vehicle. Now this customer came in, they just had a few items they want addressed, nothing more. If you go to some quick lube places or even some of your mechanic shops, it's really a hassle that you get the attempt at upsell. Hey, we found this, we found that. Hey, you need this, you need this. Uh, it's gonna be $1,200 or $1,500 or you need some new tires, you need And half the stuff doesn't even need to be done. I actually have an uncle that took his Camaro. He had a 92 Camaro RS. He took it to a quick lube place. He himself had just replaced the fuel filter. It was about this big around, it was a little metal canister, it was a small one. He replaced it himself. He took it to a quick loop. They brought in a Ford steel fuel filter. You guys know like on a Ford Explorer, the old 90s, early 2000s, the big metal ones. They brought one of those in and were shaking this dirt out of it. Oh, you got to have a new fuel filter. My uncle said, that's not even my fuel filter. Where did you even get that? Oh, oh, and then they go running back in. They're trying to sell, it's just trying to scam people. If you want us to do an inspection, we will. If you want us to just fix two items and park it outside, we will. We also will write on the ticket, no other inspections were given, took care of the customer's concerns, nothing further. If we do see something while we're working around in the area where we're working, we'll definitely let you know about that. We're not going to turn a blind eye to it. But we have several customers that do come in that say, I don't want you poking and prodding my car. Just do this item and tell me when it's done. You have to respect that. I know a lot of you guys in the comments are like, if I, you should do this car, wizard. you should be fixing this. No, I shouldn't. It's not my car. It is their decision what shall be done on their car. It's not mine. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on this really nice Jag, or the Ferrari 550 that you just saw behind you, which there will be a video on that one soon. Check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because we got Lotus videos, Ferrari videos, we got parts coming in for the Citroen, we got all kinds of really sweet videos coming in for you guys. You definitely don't want to miss out. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.